All right, Founder fans. Hi there. Welcome to Founder of the Day. Jason here. I hope everyone's ready for some good fun time trivia. Hi, John Adams. Hi, uh, Mr. Uh, Revere. Well, M Mrs. Revere, I, I, I suppose. Uh, I hope my colors are all right. Uh, I'm Sorry if I'm a little bit distracted. I came in. I think I messed up the color on my on my stream here. So as everyone's rolling, welcome to trivia. We're gonna play trivia. We are. It is a little bit wrong. I'm gonna fix it as I welcome you guys. Of course, there's always something here. Founder of the day, good at history, bad at computers. Welcome to founder of the day. Uh, let's just see if I can make this little adjustment here. Is that better? Oh nope. Okay, screwed it up as we go. Tell you what, guys, I'm gonna do this. You wanna see how I do my 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 uh, when I, how I set this up? I make it look terrible. I fix it, and then magic. And then it gets dark. And then I come here, and then I fix it up. Uh, I'm doing it on the fly, and it doesn't look great. And now my heart is racing. Okay, fair enough. Close enough. Do I look better? Anyway, let's try again. Welcome to Founder of the Day. We're gonna play trivia today, and it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a lot more fun than watching me screw up using the computer. Anyway, if you're new here, thank you for coming. I'm sure you've left by now, but if you're not new here, we're gonna play some trivia. We do a few things. First, we're gonna go to a website called Sporkle, which we will do a fun quiz game together where we will try and name a bunch of American founders. And then we're gonna play some trivia cards here, see who can get them right, see who gets it wrong. Uh, and then at the end, we're going to play another game on Sporkle where we try and name every American founder from the legis legislative branch during the American founding. It's 243 people. Last week I checked, we got 128, which is really good. Also, there is a founder of the week. If we, um, the person who names the founder of the week, as we've been doing, will win a sticker of a signature of an American revolutionary. Uh, the thing is, what we do is while we're playing the last game, whoever says the founder of the day's name will get that sticker. So, without further ado, without more screwing up, let's see, did everyone leave? No, there's a few of you here. Please hit like, definitely subscribe. So, if you're ready, I'm going to pop over to the other cam here, right about here. There we go. There we go. Once I'm, once I'm in the flow of it, I do, I should also give a shout out to our sponsor over there, Liberty & Co., who makes just the most fantastic American revolutionary uh, apparel and merchandise and anything you could possibly want. Any hoozle, we are going to play a warm-up game where we will have 13 minutes to name as many prominent, keynote, prominent military commanders during the American Revolutionary War. We're doing military this week. Last week we did revolutionary governors. This week we're doing prominent leaders. And just to scroll down to give you a hint of what we're looking for, uh, a commander in chief, that one should be real hard, uh, major generals, brigadier generals, state militia commanders, uh, continental army, the, the navy chief, if we can get him, uh, naval officers, midnight riders, and continental spies. Now, not all the spies, as you can see, not all the Midnight Riders, but the prominent ones. So, if you're ready, and I think you are, and I should check, let me check real quick, how far ahead of you am I? I did, I'm uh, not receiving enough video to maintain smooth, smooth viewing. Oh, man, things are not going great this week. What is my, where are we right now? Oh, it's all right. We'll see. I'm a little bit ahead of you. 553 over here, and... Five, okay, 5.57, and I am at 6. Okay, I'm about 8 seconds ahead of you. That's okie dokie. I'm going to hit go, and let's play. Name me some names. John Adams already, already coming through with names, and I like it. I like it, especially that first one, John Adams, because uh, oh, if I hit the button, uh, I'm going to pull it down a little bit. There are 96 people we're looking for, and I will say, uh, George Washington is probably the commander-in-chief. That's a pretty good place to start. Let's look. Name Lee. We got Charles Lee from Virginia. Not, uh, not, uh, there are a lot of Lees. It's a pretty easy one. And Paul Revere. Let's see. Paul Revere. It worked. Oh, not only, ooh, going a little fast. Not only did we get Paul Revere the Midnight Rider, but when we typed in Washington, we also got William Washington of Virginia, who ends up being named a Brigadier General close to the end of the war. Oh, and Matt's coming in strong. We've got Green. Yes, definitely Nathaniel Green. Pro arguably in my opinion, the most important general at the end of the war, uh, Warren. Uh, I wonder if they mean Dr. Joseph Warren. They do, and they mean him as a major general of the Continental Army. Oof, that's a tough one. Uh, Hamilton, he would be a major general, though not until well after the war. This, I don't know about this quiz. Well, we're doing what we can. Uh, Wooster, 
for sure. Uh, Luddington, if that's how you spell it. Luddington. Nope, I don't think that's the writer they're looking for. Montgomery. I will try Luddington again with different spellings. Dawes. Good answer. Prescott. There it is. There's the... Ooh, William Prescott. Not the... Not, I was thinking the writer, Samuel Prescott. But still, Arnold. Oh, Arnold definitely should be one. Ward for sure. Uh, Knox, Henry Knox, definitely. Uh, Arnold, wow. Arnold is a correct answer. Uh, this is specifically talking about prominent ones. Uh, let's do Lafayette. Great answer. Uh, and anyone just joining us, we're trying to name all the ma all the most prominent military men. Uh, we're going to do a little more friendly, more competition in a minute after we do this. Uh, Dawes, I think we got Dawes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. great. Uh, right, uh, anyone coming in? Type in the name of a, a revolutionary you want. Adams. Let's see if they put that in there. Um, Moultrie, I am actually wearing under here. Well, let me spell it right. Let me spell it right before I brag about my shirt. Under here, my, my Moultrie flag shirt. Uh, Knox, I think we put him in. Yep, got him. Rochambeau. I hope, oh, not sure how you spell that one. <laughs> um, uh, technically, he would have always been in the French army. So this is a he was a military commander. That's that's tough because they don't have the French army on here. Let's see. Major generals, anyone from New York? Maybe a name from a famous Broadway play, perhaps, from New York. <laughs> um, whose children may have been a little more famous than he was in said Broadway play. Uh, Mercer, not the name I was going for, but I think that's the right answer. Absolutely well played. Revere, do we do Revere? Uh, this week, I, I've learned from, like, even if I think we've done it, I'm going to type it in again anyway, because I have made some mistakes. <laughs> I made some mistakes. We missed a few last week, uh, because I presumably typed in the wrong thing or something along those lines. Lafayette, it says France. It says France, but Lafayette was commissioned as a major general in the Continental Army, but Rochambeau was commander of the French Army. I know it seems... Uh, Re the, the stupid, but <laughs> that's how it. Uh, Burr's a good guess. No, he never made his way that high up in the army. Uh, uh, Skyler, yes, that is the name I was looking for, Matt. Whoa, although Skyler comes up down here, but he she was like the number three guy for a while there. Uh, Wolf, interesting. Nope. Mule. Muhlenberg. Oh, okay, that is how you spell it. Okay, <laughs> good job. I thought I was going to have to try and spell that one several times, Miss Finn. <laughs> nope, you got it. Okay, great. I'm just a little surprised. Like I said, uh, oh, Putnam. Good, good, good answer. Um, Israel Putnam. That is strange. Where is... Uh, oh, no. Uh, no, the other Putnam was much lower. Uh, yeah, Hamilton would not be a major general until after Washington was president until I think John Adams was president technically so that's weird that he's up here it's weird that Schuyler's down here these are not in order of rank we have learned uh, Glover good answer again promoted very late in the war but uh, the guy who organized the boats to cross the Delaware Wayne Mad Anthony for certainly absolutely head of the American Legion later on in life um See, we don't have the Commander-in-Chief of the Continental Navy. If we get to five minutes and it doesn't come up, I will give you some hints. Steuben, for sure. Steuben? I don't know. Uh, Continental Spy, I will note, we have, we, they're have looking for one spy from Connecticut. United Colonies Captain. Uh, it's the one. I, I, I put some doubt on not too long ago in a video. Lamb, oh, Lamb is not up there. St. Clair, I would think for sh certainly. Mulligan, no, I could guess Lawrence, no, Lawrence was only achieved, um, I think he was colonel at one point, uh, hell, there it is, John Adams, that's what we're looking for, Tillman, I'm going to type it the way you typed it, I think you mean Tillman, no, I think that's how you spell it, yeah, no, it's, it, there's a, a GH in there, either way, fortunately, no. Um, again, uh, serving in George Washington's, uh, Lawrence Tillman, these men served in George Washington's, like, family, as he called his, um, cabinet, or, or, or close circle, 
Um, most of those men were, first of all, younger and generally served more as uh, majors or something of that nature. Uh, broadhead. Good. Oh, right up top. There you go. Uh, who's a broadhead misfit? Well played. Smallwood. Yes, William Smallwood, certainly. Uh, John Adams again. I think we got Steuben. It's uh, Steuben. Now I can't spell it, but we definitely got it. Marion, Francis Marion, the Swampy Fox, which I'm sure he would hate that I call him that. Uh, I like to take very manly nicknames and make them sound very weak and unimpressive. Huntington. <laughs> Jedediah Huntington. Now that's an interesting name. Misfit, don't be looking these up. You can look these up. It's okay. But the later game, don't be looking them up. We're going to try and guess from our minds. But again, generals are a little bit more random. Anyone just joining us late, we're playing this game. We're naming military figures from the Revolutionary War. We're going to play actual trivia after this for a little bit. And at the end, we do our big guessing game where we try and guess of the 243 legislative American founders. So throw out some names right now. You think fault in the war. It's okay to repeat. Of course, better to say something twice than to not say it at all because you think it was already said. Duportail. Good guess. Duportail. Yeah, no, I know, Miss For you, I know, I know you like the declaration signers. I don't know if Huntington signed the declaration. He signed something. Hi, Tina. Uh, uh, no, Tina's great. No, ride the wave, man. <laughs> ride the wave. And while you're here, shout out a name. We're looking for uh, generals in the army. Whipple. Whipple, maybe. Yes. Wow. Whipple's an interesting one. Because where did he land? Because he was a general, but okay. Up. Uh, he ended up being a brigadier general, but that was in the state militia, and they have state militias here. Yeah, I don't love... So a lot of these games are made up by random people who like the American Revolution. Thank you to them for doing it. Um, but uh, some of their... Some of the... You know... This particular one... Most of them are very good. This particular one is... Uh, it's not bad. It's just a little all over the place. Again, people joining us like, Oh, I said I would give us a hint. Okay, I'll do poor real quick. Yes, Enoch poor. Certainly. Um... I'm going to give you a hint for the Rhode Island, the man from Rhode Island who was commander of the Continental Navy. Um, his brother uh, signed the Declaration of Independence with a very shaky hand with the famous quote, my hand trembles but my heart does not. So if you get that guy's last name, then you'll get this guy's last name because they were brothers. Uh, hand. Do we do hand? There it is. Heath. Definitely Major and William Heath sitting up in upstate New York, just kind of hanging around most of the war. No fault of his. They thought there'd be more action there. Barry. Barry. Ooh, good. That's right. The Barry brothers. I forgot about them. Uh, Whipple. Abra... No, it didn't. It went up top. I, you got two with Whipple, actually, Amber. Uh, uh, Rhode Island. I forgot. There was an unrelated Whipple. Um, okay, wait. I don't want to get behind when I'm talking. Did I do Lincoln? Yes, I must have done Lincoln because he's definitely on there. Uh, we did Lee, but again, always repeat. It's better to say something twice than not say it at all. So, And especially you popped in a little bit late. Um, uh, Tina, so I think so. Say names we already did. It's fine. I will keep typing as long as I can. Uh, do you mean Gerard? Maybe? Uh, Hopkins, there it is. Essex Hopkins. Ooh, and who's this? John Burroughs Hopkins. Also of Rhode Island, I would assume related, but I don't know. I'm going to have to write about that guy pretty soon. Uh, Prescott. N uh, no, uh, we actually did Prescott. Oh, and I was right. So Samuel Prescott did make it as one of the writers, as did um, uh, William Prescott. Uh, Spate. No, not a commander. Boone. Good. Guess my... Oh, and it made it. Where does Boone land? Oh, as a... Oh, over here for Kentucky... Daniel Boone, very, very, very good guess, uh, Misfit. There's a Jones. I'm assuming there's a John Paul Jones surfing the water somewhere. Sumter. There it is. Thomas Sumter, South, South Carolina, SC. Let's see. Stark, Tony Stark. Stark. He's got to be up there, right? Yep. Live for your die, Tony. No. Smith. Always good to go with random names. Not this time. Nice try. <laughs> I don't mean random names. I should have said common names. A little bit choppy today. I'm sorry about that, guys. Not exactly sure why. Mario. Kind of doubt it. Not a lot of Italians serving in the kind of... It's weird. There's actually... Now that I'm joking about that, there were 
people from all over Europe came to serve in the Continental Army, and I don't know of anyone from Italy. I do know of the the Izzard, Ralph Izzard did uh, was commissioned to go as a diplomat to Tuscany, so we were in negotiations with them. But Italy wasn't Italy as we think of it now. Same thing with Germany; they they were separate states. It wasn't a unified nation. Cat opening the door, come to say hi, and someone closed it real quick. All right, good night, bud. Um, let's see, Stone, no. Will, no. Pretty brief name. Uh, Eli Elisha. Hunt, Rhodes, Clark, good, good guess, yes. What war? What war? Oh, oh, the Revolutionary War. I'm sorry, Tina. Uh, Revolutionary War, although as we said, some of this is from a little bit after. Hamilton got promoted a little early on this particular list. Um, looking for Major General from Jersey and New York. State Militia Commanders from Lexington, Massachusetts. Concord, Massachusetts. Vermont. Um... Uh, we, I think we did do Glover. That's okay. Kosuso. Koscuzio. I know who you're going for, Matt. Don't know how to spell. It's probably right. <laughs> we'll count that. Backy. Nope. Burns. Sullivan. Good. Good one. All right. We have four more. Sullivan. Who joined Sullivan on his famous campaign? Whose name is also attached to the Sullivan blanky campaign? Talmadge. No, they do not like Talmadge. Did I spell it right? Yes. Parker. Oof, John Parker. Whoa, that's a good guess. Oh, running low. I only got 15 seconds, and I am about 9 seconds ahead of you. Kosciusko. There it is. There it is, Matt. That's a tough name. It's I, I accept that you looked it up. <laughs> Alan? Oh, I couldn't get it in in time. Oh, I couldn't get it in in time. 48 and 96. It's a pretty good run. It's pretty good. Average score is 22%. We got exactly 50%. I am impressed. I am impressed. I'm going to make myself bigger so you can see how impressed I am that we did that. And I hope I look all right. I changed the colors real quick. Really screwed it up today. No, Matt is fine. <laughs> the thing is, if it ended and we didn't get it, I was just going to look through and find the spelling anyway. Uh, let's look and see some names that we may have missed out on. Um, uh, Horatio Gates is a pretty big... Oh, wait. I'll show you guys. There we go. Horatio Gates is a pretty big one. Uh, James Clinton I was hinting at with the Sullivan Clinton expedition in upstate New York. William Alexander, a.k.a. Lord Sterling. Clinton would have also gotten us from New York. His brother, Brigadier General. Uh, it was technically Commander-in-Chief of the New York. Uh, brigade. Oh, these, they're in alphabetical order by last name. Interesting. Lakeland McIntosh. I don't know if that's spelled right. Uh, over here we missed Ethan Allen. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, let's see. Thomas, Stephen, Pickens, Nash, Moore. You know, fairly common names. Uh, oh, here's another one from France. Laumoy. I can never say that name. William Woodford. Who's down here? Oh, Biddles, oof. I have a, 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 a viewer named Jan who is a descendant of the Biddle family, who I, I assume is not here because Biddle is the first and only name she would have given. Not the only name. She would be good at this game, actually, but uh, uh, Biddle is important. And Lambert Wicks down here is actually arguably the most important member of the Continental Navy. Yes, John Paul Jones is there, but not quite what he did, although unfortunately he dies pretty early, which is not great for people who don't want to die. Um, I'm back. Uh, leader of the Green Mountain Boys. I forgot his name. Yes, Ethan Allen. Uh, Ethan Allen. He was up there, but we missed him, unfortunately. Um, we did also, uh, 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 what's the other gentleman's name? Oh, it's eluding me, who fought at Crown Point and was a Green Mountain Boy. Number two to Ethan Allen eventually took over for Ethan Allen. Uh... Oh, I feel so bad for this guy because I know his name. He was part of the the Bennington. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna forget about that for now. Take a quick sip of coffee because, well, we're about to play real live actual doing trivia trivia. It's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Thank you guys for coming. Make sure you hit like. Uh, this is kind of a competition, but again, the prizes are gonna go out to those um, people who are uh whoever says this week's special founder's name 
is going to get the sticker. Uh, but that's in the last guessing part when we get there. So, I have a bunch of cards here, yada, yada, yada. We're going to play for about 15 minutes before we do the other thing and end after about an hour. Again, thank you guys for coming. This is a lot of fun that I have. Uh, you have not commented on my new shirt. <laughs> I have many new shirts that I ordered recently because some comments about how little flannel I own uh, really inspired me to go out and buy more flannel because I wanted more because I didn't own a lot. And now I'm going to try and write it off my taxes. I think I can. Technically, uh, this is my new career. <laughs> so let's do a trivia card. We're going to start with the what happened here questions. I don't want to hold them too close because I've learned that messes up the focus. And uh, thank you, John Adams. Uh, to be fair, uh, my mom had a blue and yellow one. So I got one just like it because I really liked it too. Um, believe it or not, uh, spoiler alert, I am really comfortable in and fit really well in the Walmart shirts that are like 10 bucks. So when I say about all this new flannel, I'm not spending that much. I'm not sponsored by Walmart. Actually, technically sponsored by Liberty & Co. Amazing company. I don't buy a lot of stuff in Walmart, but I just really love the flannel there. So, there you go. <laughs> but, for what you care about, the American Revolution trivia, uh, the card, this is New York down here. Again, I have like a lot of lights. If I tip it forward, New York, New England. And right about here is Cobalt Skill, New York. And we're going to figure out what happened here on this day. I don't know the answers to these either, so I'm going to guess along with you. Cobalt Skill, New York, May 30th, 1778. What happened in Cobalt Skill, New York, May 30th, 1778? So as someone who used to live not far from there, uh, in Oneonta, is about half an hour away, and it's probably about half an hour drive outside Albany, New York. Um, hi, Ashley. We just did the warm-up where we guessed some generals, and now we're starting the card trivia before we do our big guests. So thank you for coming. Just talking about how sweet my new flannel is. <laughs> um, what happened in Cobalt Skill, New York, May 30th, 1778? It's about eh, half an hour, hour drive outside Albany, New York. Um, uh, the Siege of Fort Ticonderoga, that's a good guess, John, Mr. Adams. It would, uh, Ticonderoga, would, I would think would say Ticonderoga, New York, uh, would be my best guess. Uh, although not necessarily, uh, and this is, that is a great guess, because Ticonderoga is about, uh, 45 minutes north, and this is about 45 minutes west by northwest, so that's a great guess, especially if you don't live in New York, um, like, I do, <laughs> I used to say, and I went to college, like, 25 minutes from there, um, hi, Ginger, no, welcome, you're right on time, Ginger, uh, uh Ashley just popped in, uh, we just did our, we, we just guessed a bunch of leading generals, in the war, now we're doing trivia, figuring out what happened just out in Cobalt Skill in May of 1778, doing our trivia cards before we do our big fun guess at the end. Thank you so much. Uh, Matt, I-88. Is that the road? It is the road. 88 goes from Binghamton to Albany. It's the weirdest highway in the world, right through Oneonta, past Cobalt Skill. Yeah. Good. Uh, but in 1778, it was not I-80. Uh, I don't think it was the Battle of Cobalt Skill. I think what they're looking at, looking for is the Cherry Valley Massacre with the Native Americans. Um, although that would have been in Cherry Valley. Uh, okay, yes, okay. Um, Mohawk leader Joseph Brant's loyalist and Iroquois, totaling around 300 men, drew the few settlers around Cobalt Skill into a trap, later plundering and setting fire to area homes. That July, as Brandt conducted raids elsewhere, Tory and Indian forces under Major John Butler clashed with rebels at Wyoming Valley, Pennsylvania, inflicting hundreds of casualties while suffering fewer than 10. The shock and devastating defeat and the settlers' general fear of Indians caused widespread panic in the region. Exaggerations about the massacre ran rampant, attributing horrific atrocities to against civilians to Brandt's men who were not even present. The stories funneled, fueled Indian anger and became reality in mid-November. Uh, at Cherry Valley, New York, Brandt's forces, incensed by accusations and by the recent destruction of several Indian villages by revolutionary forces, plundered the settlement, slaughtered inhabitants, and basically committed atrocity anyway. And then they used the word Native American. They used the word Indian a lot before Native American. So, it wasn't Cherry Valley. It was a few settlers into a trap 
plundering and setting fire to homes. They so they set fire to a few homes. It was a random skirmish. It wasn't even a skirmish. Don't like that question. Sorry to waste your time. <laughs> As many of you know, I do not love all the questions on these cards. That's why we're using a variety of different cards. Um, is there a historical site to see in Cobalt School? Cobalt School is about 20, 30 minutes outside of uh, Cooperstown, New York, which has the Baseball Hall of Fame. So there's that historical site. Uh, I don't know of Cobalt Skill. Like, I'll look it up. I'll tell you what. At the end, remind me. We'll look up Cobalt Skill on the interweb, uh, and we'll see something else. I, I'm sorry. That's a terrible question. Let's go. If you're just joining us, if you're new here, please ignore that question. We do usually do a lot better. Uh, except these. These are the Constitution question cards. The Constitution question cards, I also don't know the answers to. They leave the American Revolution. Just fair warning, we will be leave, probably be leaving the American Revolution with this question. Um, a raid. Yeah, it was a weird one. So, it was... Basically, they drew they drew some settlers into a trap. The settlers would have been fighting in a, you know, a militia, basically. But they captured a bunch of settlers and then burned down some houses. But what happened then is people started saying that was a massacre and an atrocity. And then later atrocities were attributed to Joseph Brandt, who wasn't at the later atrocities. And eventually, Brandt got fed up because... Patriots were burning Native American villages, and Native Americans were, Joseph Brown was being attributed to atrocities he did not commit, and he said, you know what, if I'm going to go down in history as a guy who commits atrocities anyway, and they're burning my villages, I'm going to go do Cherry Valley, uh, and Cherry Valley was uh, yeah, pretty terrible, uh, which, by the way, uh, Route Interstate 20, Route 20, goes right by my house here, uh, it goes all the way to the West Coast, that is known, at least in my area, as Cherry Valley Turnpike. And I am now about two and a half hours away from Cherry Valley, so Cherry Valley still hangs around as uh, that. See, it's also scenic byway twenty. So if you want not historical sites, but just panoramic views, scenic byway twenty. Once ridden by Marquis de Lafayette. I've gotten way off topic, but I hope you appreciate how I brought it back to the American Revolution. <laughs> okay, so trivia question. Can residents of the District of Columbia vote in presidential elections? Ooh, interesting question. Can residents of the District of Columbia vote in presidential elections? Mr. Adams, I will not be traveling to the West Coast anytime soon. Uh, if I go out that far, I'll be going to Denver where my brother moved about a year ago and I've never visited, so I'm a terrible person. Though, to be fair, I moved about six hours away from my parents, so now that he moved all the way across the country, well, I don't look so bad now, do I? <laughs> uh, you're, Matt, you're humbling. Yeah, you knew that. Yeah, okay, we got some answers in. Uh, Adams, yes, actually, no. Uh, Matt, yes, Miss Fit, yes. Can residents of the District of Columbia vote for president? Uh, I do believe so. They just can't. They're not represented in Congress. They have uh, a person in Congress who doesn't, a non-voting member of Congress, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yes, even though the District of Columbia is not a state and has only a non-voting delegate in the House of Representatives, the 23rd Amendment ratified in 1961 gave district residents the right to vote for president and gave the district electoral votes equivalent to those of the least populous state. That I didn't realize. Uh, great. Yes. Oh, Ashley coming in with the 23rd Amendment. Oof. Really coming in hot, Ashley. I appreciate that. Um, Ele uh, delegate Eleanor Holmes Norton. Uh, very interesting. Well played. And I would like to give another shout out uh, to, again, super random as I pick up the next card. Uh, we discussed the treasurer of the United States recently. Uh, uh, and of course, the founder's name is escaping. Oh, oh, Thomas Tudor. Thomas Tudor Tucker uh, was a longtime serving founder who served as treasurer, not secretary of the treasury, treasurer of the United States. Uh, and I realized really this week, for those of you who missed the live wrap-up video, since 1949, every person to be treasurer of the United States has been a woman, and like 70% of those women have been Hispanic, uh, for whatever reason, which I just think is an amazing fact, especially because um, their name, there are two names on every dollar bill, every single, every hundred, every bill, two signatures. One of them is treasurer, Secretary of Treasury, one of them is Treasurer. So there's been a woman, generally a Hispanic woman, whose signature has been on all the money since the 1940s. Thank you, Harry Truman. Uh, let's see, it's one of the few amendments other than the first ten I remember from government class. Was Gerard a founder? Giraffe. 
Gararf. I don't know that name. We will. I will have to look it up. I don't know. There's a lot of them, but uh, it would not surprise me. Um, as far as amendments and founders go, so when the Bill of Rights was written and there were 10 amendments, there were actually 12 amendments. Only 10 were ratified by the states. One, the 11th, which I'm writing... Uh, no, no, I shouldn't even say the 11th. One fell by the wayside, and one was eventually ratified. One of the Bills of Rights, the 11th Bill of Rights, was ratified as the 27th Amendment in 1992, when a good portion of us were alive, uh, which has to do with Congress paying itself, as opposed to setting payment for the following Congress. Anyway. Uh, hey, Troy. Welcome. Not the only West Coaster in the house, apparently. Uh, you're just in time. We're just going through some of the trivia questions. About to ask another one. We still got time to do our wrap-up. You did miss... Uh, we did some generals and, and some military men. But that's okie-dokie. We have plenty of fun. And it's not the best quiz in the world, as we learned. Uh, now, today's American... I'm going to cover up the back because I don't want to see the answers. Today's American uh, uh, trivia board game. One comes from this uh, seven Age of 7 and Up game. Uh, is... Stamp Act. So I've got six questions about the Stamp Act, uh, three for students, and three for scholars, which I think means kids and grown-ups. <laughs> but we'll see. So, question number one. Who went to Britain to argue against the Stamp Act? There are three answers here, because this is for kids. But I am not going to read them because it will give it away. Who went to Britain to argue against the Stamp Act? What person? What founder? I'm about 11 seconds ahead. I'm stalling. I'm going to sip my coffee while I wait for you guys to... It's not hot anymore. I don't have to be gross about it. <laughs> um, okay, I see an answer coming in. Misfit Sam Franklin. That's a great guess. Again, the Stamp Act was passed in the 1760s. Uh, and someone was, uh, you know, went over there before the revolution, uh, to argue against it. Meanwhile, there were many American founders met at the Stamp Act Congress in New York City. Uh, they got together, they wrote three letters, one to the king, one to the House of Commons, and one to the House of Lords. And guess what? It worked, and everything was honky-dory, fine. They repealed it. They did repeal it and make another law saying, we could pass a law in all cases whatsoever uh, we just don't feel like it anymore and that's why nine years later when the first Continental Congress met they thought that the same thing would happen they'd send their grievances over and everything would be cool all right so got a bunch of answers in here uh, and I'm gonna say the first one was right I would say it is Mr. Franklin am I am I yep Benjamin Franklin good guess misfit uh, we've got a lot of really interesting answers there. Uh, John Adams came up a few times. John Adams, again, this is the Stamp Act, so this is before the Revolutionary War, uh, and, and John Adams wouldn't go for like another 12, 13 years. Um, Franklin would actually come back and then return. And John Quincy's an interesting guest, Matt, um, but he would have been like two <laughs> or so at that point. Uh, but John Quincy does, of course, become a very important uh, diplomat for the United States. <laughs> I believe you're not looking it up. Not not that one. That's that's just. I mean, Franklin's uh, usually a good guess. <laughs> uh, no, my memory does not serve right. That's okay. Let's ask the next question. After many protests by colonists, the Stamp Act was repealed by the British government. True or false? The Stamp Act was repealed by the British government after repeated protests. Oh, Matt, Josiah Quincy. Oh, oh, that might not be a wrong answer. Um, now, so it did say, I will say for question number one, it was Ben Franklin, Crispus Attucks, or George Washington. Um, Crispus Attucks, of course, was an African-American man who, even though he uh, would probably not have been entrusted with that uh, type of thing at the time, uh, that, uh, of course, you know, um, you know uh, <laughs> uh, and George Washington never went to Europe, so... Um, I've seen Oversimplified. Oversimplified is a great channel. Um, yeah, it's true. I, I literally said that when I was answering the first question. So, sorry, whoopsie-doo. Um, true or false? Again, these are the student ones. The Stamp Act The Stamp Act taxed all forms of written documents, including playing cards. Not my cards. 
not my trivia cards. Sorry, I keep looking at myself over here. Not the trivia cards. Uh, would this card have been st needed a stamp from the Stamp Act? Let me know. Uh, Misfit, I actually just remembered Franklin was in hot water because people believed he was rubbing elbows and meant to betray the colonists. That's a really good point, Misfit. Ben Franklin, while he was over there, a lot of people over in America didn't like what he had to say. It's one of the reasons he ends up coming back after the first con after the first Continental Congress. He comes back and then is sent like right to the Second Continental Congress, where he's like, "No, come on, <laughs> I've been doing my best." And in fact, if you read like the speech he gives to uh, the House, the House of Commons, like he was doing his best. And we're getting all truths here. Yeah, that was certainly true. Uh, stamp back was everything: playing cards, newspapers, legal documents. Uh, so like, if you want to buy a house, you need a stamp. Uh, if you want to buy a paper or a book, you need a stamp. It was even things that weren't uh, stamps. Uh, um, dice, I think, needed a stamp. Wallpaper. Um, in fact, if you go to, we were mentioning the Whipples before. William Whipple owned what is called the Moffat Lad House uh, in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And they have a piece of wallpaper where on the back, if you're nice to them, they will show you. I was very nice to them, and they showed me, like, a stamp. I was, I couldn't believe it. I never even thought to look for a stamp before. And there it was. Um... Uh, he was doing, let me see, I'm going to read that in a second, John Adams. I'm just going to read the next question. We're up to the scholar level. <clears throat> what three-word phrase best describes the colonist problems with the Stamp Act? What's a famous three-word phrase from the American Revolution? Over some fight, he's doing an example of the Stamp Act, and he says, give me some cards, I can gamble my pain away, and the shopkeeper stamp the cards. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, no, Oversimplified is a really funny channel. Uh, if you guys obviously like history and YouTube, uh, definitely check them out. I was also watching today, uh, you guys might really enjoy um, Townsend's. Uh, it's James Townsend and Sons, but the YouTube name is Townsend's. And, and they focus on mostly 18th century cooking, but he's been out a while, and uh, his channel's grown over the years. They built like a whole cabin in an old-timey way and everything. Uh, see you later, Mr. Adams. Thank you for coming. Uh, what about stamps? Did stamps need a stamp? That's funny, uh, but I don't think that's how postage worked. They didn't have that kind of adhesive, Matt. <laughs> um, cash money problems. Well, you would have needed to stamp uh, cash, uh, legal tender, but the, uh, but you couldn't because at that point, the, the same time as the Stamp Act, we've talked about the other day, was also the Currency Act, and the Currency Act is super overlooked because it said you can't print your own money, and they were like, but like we don't have any money. <laughs> um Taxation without representation. Everything's coming through. Uh, Town Towns is great. You've seen it, Troy? I love Town. I've been on him for a while. Actually, if you look uh, on my Patreon page, uh, all the way back, one of the first things I did when I first hit like 10 bucks or 20 bucks, whenever basically Matt and TJ showed up, <laughs> um, I, I followed one of his earliest recipes, which is like um, ash cakes. It's essentially flour that you mix with water and put in a fire. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, thank you for coming, John. Uh, yeah, he's got really cool stuff. I always want to buy... I buy these flannels, like I said, from Walmart. But I always want to buy the... Um, uh, like, everything on his website. He has so many cool old-timey clothes. Um, life was very difficult back then. Uh, okay, so taxation without representation. Yes, everyone got it right. Uh, next question. Various taxes were levied on the North American colonies in an effort to raise money to cover the depths of what war? Let me say this better. <clears throat> Various taxes were levied on North American colonies in an effort to raise money to cover the debts from what war? Huh? What war happened and that they decided to uh, start taxing these colonies? Um... Uh, real quick, yeah. All right, coming in with the French and Indian War. I'm seeing the answers to the French and Indian War. Technically, it's the, yes, man, no, got me. Seven Years War, right. Uh, if we want to be worldly about it, not be so Amerocentric, it's the Seven Years War, which Winston Churchill called the First World War, and in America, we just happen to call it the French and Indian War because that's who we were fighting. On here, it just says French and Indian War. <laughs> but, you know, here to learn. Uh, what did Brit... <coughs> Excuse me. I'll get it out. What did British merchants... Why did British merchants eventually oppose the Stamp Act? That's an important question. Why did British merchants oppose the Stamp Act? Not colonial 
merchants, British merchants. Why did they oppose the Stamp Act? Excuse me one second. That one's water, not coffee. I, I my, my other cup's dirty. I have this little tiny cup today. <laughs> water. Money, 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 man. <laughs> make money, money, make money, money. I, uh, yeah, uh, essentially. Uh, I don't see other randoms coming in that quickly, but essentially, Matt's right. Um, unlike after the first Continental Congress, where there was an official boycott and they promoted and actually tried to actively prevent uh, things being imported, because of the Stamp Act, the colonists just, you know, boycotts were organized, but essentially, the colonists were like, okay, we can't buy anything anymore. <laughs> like, um, I will also remind you that at the same time, uh, and what the answer says on here is colonists had stopped importing their products. But that's that's kind of, a, again, a generalization of what was happening. Because the Navigation Acts, which had been around for like 100 years, were finally being enforced. So suddenly smuggling stopped, which hurt, hurt the merchants. Um, suddenly people couldn't buy the things they were selling because they didn't have the money for the stamps. Um, and, they were ang and they were angry and did their best to produce things at home. Uh, it's kind of a threefold answer there. So... Um, let's see. Oh, we're already at 43 minutes. That's all right. We might run a little bit over today. Um, no, you know what? We did three cards, and that's what we did last time. It's 20 minutes for the big show. Why don't we go right to the big show? If we want to ask another question or two at the end, we can absolutely do that as long as this pen stops grabbing my hand. So we're going to pop up over here. Yeah, yeah, Ashley. Um, British merchants were the ones who got the stamp back repealed. Ben Franklin, you know, the colonists wrote their grievances and they thought that did a lot of help. And Ben Franklin was there, literally stood on the floor of the House of Commons, shaking his fingers, saying, this is stupid. You're going to lose your money. You're going to make people angry. But it was British merchants, because you know how wealthy people always run the country, <laughs> no matter who's in office. Uh, the merchants were like, hey, the, uh, your majesty, we're losing all our money here. If we don't have money to pay you taxes, then these people aren't going to pay your, you know, no one's paying you taxes. And the, and the king and parliament were like, okay. Okay, whoopsie-daisy. Sorry. And then they rescinded the laws. And they, as I said, passed the, the, the Enabling Act, which uh, said, uh, not essentially, and I quote, that uh, the, the British could pass laws on behalf of the colonies, quote, in all cases whatsoever. Uh, we just don't feel like it right now. <laughs> sure you don't, guys. Sure you don't. I'm going to pop this back up. We're going to go over here. I'll give you a big old reminder. We are going to try and name as a team the essentially the most important legislators of the American founding. Now, it's not every person in the Continental Congress, though I wish it was. It is members of the first Continental Congress, signers of the Declaration of Independence, signers of the Articles of Confederation, Delegates to the Constitutional Convention, including the people who didn't sign, not just the three who didn't want to, but people who left early, and members of the first United States Congress. So inaugural members of the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. I will also remind you that we are talking about 243 people. And last week, we named 128. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope we can get to 140. I think that's a good goal, a doable goal this week. So, oh, and lastly but not leastly, if you say the magic name, uh, I won't pause it, but I will pop them up, and you will win the sticker. There is one magic name. Ready, set, go. Okay, and while I'm waiting for you to say George Washington, I'll type in George Washington, because I am about 10 seconds ahead of you guys, and you're going to say George Washington. So there he is. Somehow not first on the list, um, but there he is, just, just looking at you. Okay, we're a few seconds in. Oh, Misfit going with Whipple. I like it. I like Whipple. Mammy. Uh, Folsom. Troy. Good guess. Pack. I don't remember saying Folsom last week at all. Lansing. Yes, he left the Constitutional Convention. Adams. There are a few Adamses. Uh, Yates. Oh, we're coming in hot. Uh, Robert Yates. Probably Brutus, who we've been writing and talking about a whole lot. St. Clair. For sure. Wilson. Always got to be a Wilson. Hamilton. There he is, Jefferson. Yes, we're getting, we don't want to leave out the big six. We should probably get them out of the way quick. Hancock, Han, Hancock. Okay, can I talk? Uh, uh, okay, okay. He is coming in so quick. Moon Earth. Biddle, way to remember. That's, that's how you do it, Troy. Don't want to leave anyone out, we said before. Uh, 
Dickerson. Is that a Dick Inson? Yes, I'm going for it because that name will come up. Payne, Rush, Bartlett. Two T's. That's okay, Matt. I'll take it. Jerry, not Gary. Johnson, Tucker. Oh, Tucker's on there. He made it. Oh, Gary, we did, but I'm going to type everyone in again because I made mistakes last week and didn't type in names that I thought we already had. Hancock. Um, Madison, getting the big six. We want to make sure we don't miss the big six. Henry, oh, and I can't type. You guys are really going for it. Hopkins. Hopkins. There's one like Hopkins we don't want to forget, though. Bartlett. Uh, yeah, we did Bartlett. Monroe. Did James Monroe? Yes, he was an inaugural member of the United States. Uh, Senate. Uh, Lee. Lots of Lees. Good guess. Henry. Sherman. Classic. Uh, Lawrence, Tucker, we got, oh, we got Tucker, everyone wants to go back to Tucker, I like it, Dean, Silas Dean, much overrated, Carol, not just Charles Carroll, I think there's several Carols, Gadsden with his ba badass flag, Jay, that's right, Hughes, Hopkins, Son, yes, Chase, there it is, I just dipped in Hopkinson, Reed, Reed with two E's, Reed, Reed, and that one has two E's. Blair, Williamson. Oh, Williams. Okay. <laughs> Williamson. Uh, Reed with two E's. We did low. Yes. Low with an E. No. Okay. Just checking. Mifflin. Excellent. Like Dunder Mifflin. We did do Reed with two. Thank you, Misfit, for getting the hint. Crane. Ooh, interesting. Wilson. Yeah, we did Wilson. Okay. Alrighty then. Whoa, 58. All right. We're, we're not even three minutes in. Uh, Jay, I think we did. Gerard, really going for that name. <laughs> you might have come in a little late for that, Ashley, but a, a name similar to Gerard keeps coming up. Bland, Richard Bland, right up top, even though you might have been thinking of Theodoric Bland, who has a great name. I call, I'd call him Theo, because, you know, I like to give people nicknames. Taking a hiatus? Let's see. I'm going to sip my coffee and see how far behind I get. Huh? Huh? Come on, guys. We're at 60. We got to 120 last time. We're halfway there. Why? With. With. It's pronounced with. With. I've been saying with for way too long. Spate. Matt, really? I, I, I will take credit for teaching you Blount because you think I'm a football player. <laughs> You're welcome, Matt. <laughs> Ooh, and, oh, uh, Stockton. Nice. Witherspoon. Hey, historical, I haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming. We're just naming uh, King. Every American uh, founder who participated in the legislative branch, if they signed something, they remember the first, uh, uh, in the inaugural U.S. Congress, throw us some names. Hosmer, it's okay if we've said them already. Clymer, Wolcott, it's better to say it twice than not say it at all. And whoever says a special magical name wins a prize. If someone says it, I think they will. It has come up every time, and it's a super random name, but I was a little nervous it's too random, and we'd forget this time, <laughs> probably. Galloway. There it is, Matt. Oh, oh, Mr. Galloway's not here this time. That's all right. He'll be back. Um, Galloway, a loyalist, like one of the lows. Been on vacation. Awesome. Well, if we don't get a name, we're trying to get 243 names, so if we don't get one, Taylor, did I just do that? Because I'm talking. King, I'm not going to type Misfit in this time. Cushing, not the winner this time. Nice try, Misfit. Good guess. It's a very good guess. I'm glad you remembered. Uh, Cushing's a really important name. Uh, uh, did, oh, Witherspoon. Did I type it? Okay. Howard. Interesting. Packa. Did we do Packa? I think we did that right off the bat. Uh, there was, there was a name I saw I wanted to talk about, and now I've forgotten it. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Did I do Wolcott? Okay. Uh, Payne. J. J. We must have done Payne because this is definitely a correct answer. Rumpel still skin. I can't even spell it. Nice try. Rumpel Stiltskin, actually an American Revolution story. If you don't remember, uh, I do believe Hopkins. I do believe I made a video about it a while back. Matt. Not yet. One day, Matt. Dana. Francis Dana. Good one. Really good one. Really important. Uh, Ames. Uh, yeah, Rumpelstiltskin uh, was written by... Uh, 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 Ames. Fisher Ames. Yeah. 
uh, Rumpelstiltskin was written by, uh, no, not Rumpelstiltskin. I'm thinking of Rip Van Winkle. Rip Van Winkle was written by a Washington Irving. Uh, Mifflin Pinkney. No, try that again. Pinkney. Rush. Did we already do Rush? Because Rush is an answer. We must have already done it, right? Livingston. Oh, yes. Rush is behind my head. There he is. Up here. Okay. Made me nervous there. I was wondering why I wouldn't take Sumter with an N. No. Livingston. I know I'm doing them twice, but I don't want to miss again. I don't want to be the reason we don't make it. McKean. Dayton. Ooh, is the one that sounds like that? Might have been a football player. Hooper. Hooper. <laughs> Floyd. Oh, my old homie. Penn. Middleton. That's at least two guys, right? Yeah, whammy. Bedford. Gunning Bedford. Good one. Tomage. No, he was not. He would serve in the House of Representatives, uh, but he was busy uh, being a warrior. And there's not a whole lot of soldiers or generals or officers. There's Dalton. There it is, Misfit. That's the football player. McKean. There is one sounds like Dayton. Ah, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. Ah. Now I'm going to let you guys do it. Wilson. I think we did Wilson, yeah. De Hart. Good one. What if I just do heart too? Yes, I did heart too. De heart and heart were two different answers. That's very interesting. I'll give you that one. Tell you what, if we can get up to 130, I will tell you the one I'm holding back. Dane, I think we did. Yep. Drayton. There it is, Misfit. Drayton. That was the one I was thinking of. Peyton. Nope. Peyton's the first name of two names that we have not done yet. There are two separate Peytons with a land from the South with a last name that starts with the same letter that we have not yet done. Bartlett. I think we did Penn. Clinton. No historical. As I've said. Oh, Zubley. No, Zubley's not on there. He got kicked out of the Continental Congress pretty quick. Braxton. Yes, Carter Braxton. Um, historical. Interestingly, Clinton... Uh, there were a lot of Clintons, but none of them were particular here again it's not everyone in the continental congress only a signer of something or someone who went to the continental constitutional convention or an initial member of the house or senate willing i literally just typed that i just want to be safe rober doe is a correct answer if i can spell it right randolph that's right edmund randolph is one of them oh morton martin lawrence and i'm gonna pop this up while you guys are doing that who said it oh misfit Whammy, John Morton, today's founder of the day. You win, Misfit. Hit me up on the Discord in a private message, and uh, I'll, uh, I, I might still have your address somewhere, but let me know. You win a sticker. I'll get it to you. We'll do this. Boop, 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 boop. Hopefully no one has a seizure. Okay. Lawrence did not work. What? Lawrence. Lawrence. Okay, we must have already typed Lawrence because that's definitely the right answer. Skyler, and now I'm behind. Yes, yeah, celebrate, celebrate. Lewis, Lee, I think we did, yeah. Um, Izzard, Ralph Izzard, great, great guess, Troy. Fitz Simmons, which I have learned you can spell wrong on here and it still takes. Uh, one of the few Catholics to sign the uh, Constitution. I think someone said McKean, but again, can't hurt. Better to say it seven times than to say it none. Uh, Jennifer. I'm going to spell it the way you did. That's wrong. I-F-E-R. One N. Matt, I know. Some of these names are ridiculous. Sherman. I think we did Sherman. Yes, good. Johnson. I think we did, but one that sounds just like Johnson, but a little different. We didn't do King. Uh, emoji seizure. <laughs> I don't know if they make seizure emojis. You know, the poop one's supposed to be ice cream. <laughs> Muhlenberg. I'm glad you know how to spell that. Pinkney. I think we did Pinkney. Great. And that was definitely two. Bannister. Yes, good one. Ooh, right up top. Parker. Yeah, nice. 
Mick Henry. And we're just over halfway. Johnston. There it is. Johnston is spelled like that too. Nope. Sometimes our two names spelled almost exactly alike. Uh, Gary. I think we did that. Did I miss one? Did someone name someone we did this week? And I didn't type it in. Brown. Good one. Some colors are good. Bloodworth. Timothy Bloodworth. Big fan of Timothy Bloodworth. He's kind of a school teacher who like wasn't good at teaching school and like was really good about talking trash and politics. Made his way to <laughs> Senate. Climber. He was one of those dudes who fought tooth and nail. The reason North Carolina did not ratify the Constitution, the first convention. And then, because he was so against the Constitution, is why one of the reasons they chose him. Harvey? Is he? Yeah, John Harvey. Good friend of Thomas Jefferson. Moore. Yes. Tucker. Oh, oh we must have already done Tucker. Yeah, we did uh, We did right off the bat, because I remember being surprised, like, oh, that worked. <laughs> but he was an inaugural member of the... Uh, Sullivan. Johnny Sullivan. Not James Sullivan, who I... Did I publish it yet? Yes, published it yesterday's founder. Uh, Wincoop, at least my article. I will say Dean with an E. I think we did that already. Monroe, again, it's okay to do him twice. It's better to do him twice than not to do him at all. We're at 115. We did 120 last week. So we have seven minutes to catch up to what we did last week. I think we can get 25 more. I think we can get 140. It would be a really impressive feat. Sturgis, yes, like the race way. I don't know if it's named after him. I don't think so, because South Dakota was not part of America, even after the Louis. No, well, no, I don't think Sturgis technically was part of the Louisiana Purchase. Tillman, pronounce Tillman. If I can spell it right, we did already. I already, <laughs> after correcting Matt on how to spell it, I can't spell it right myself again. Is Izzard, yes for sure. Uh, we did Izzard, I think, is why it didn't come up. Trumbull, good one, Franklin. Look at that. Would have been real unhappy not to get one of the big six, huh? Great job, Ashley. Catching up. Gwinnett. Button. All right. With almost seven minutes left to spare, we have caught up to where we were last week. Great job, team. Uh, Conti. I don't even know who that is. Harrison. William Henry's father, Benjamin. And Benjamin, the president's great-grandfather, also Benjamin. Dyer. There are a few names that that reminds me of from when I play. Like, I, I'm, I'm letting you guys run the show here. Monroe. Man, you guys are really going after Monroe today. I've <laughs> heard Monroe a bunch of times. Hayward. Um, Hopkins. Do we, did we do that? I think we did. Uh, Dickinson. I think we did Dickinson pretty early. Walker. Good one. Really good one. Um, more football players. <laughs> uh, Elmer. Good one. Oof. Um, pain. Yeah, uh, we've done pain. I think that's why it does show. Baldwin. Yep. Lynch. Thomas Lynch. Reed. That might have been two answers, actually, because Thomas Lynch. Uh, Cadwallader, which I don't pronounce correctly. I've been told several times. And I keep changing how I pronounce it, and I still keep doing it wrong, so. Um, I've confirmed myself too. Rush. Yes, we got Rush. Let's see, 130, can we get 10 more in five minutes? If I scroll through, will that be helpful? Another signer of the articles. Gun, good one, James Gunn. Um, New York, Sumter, I think we did that one. Rutledge, there it is, the other uh, Edmund. And John, that's probably two, I didn't pay enough attention, but it's probably two. Ch Chase. Nope. We must have done Chase because he signed the Declaration of Independence. Again, that's okay if we do that. Also, I'm like slouching. I'm like putting my. I have a stool here. I like lean back on. So. Sorry, guys. Uh, let's see. Matthews. Probably. Matthews. Maybe one T. No, definitely not. Oh, one T. Look at that. I'm glad I tried it. Cokes. No, I don't think so. He was a loyalist for most of this time. And then he went right into Washington's cabinet. So, uh, technically not Washington's cabinet, but in the Treasury Department. He's, a, I think, Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, the first one. Um, Tench Cox, or Cox, or however you say it. Um, uh, and that's the executive branch, and we're doing the legislative branch. So, whammy. Though, 
certain presidents of the Continental Congress we haven't named, which are technically legislative because it's almost like president of the state senate. Um, Dyke, I think that, no. Tom Sun, yes. The secretary. Again, not he wasn't technically a member. I'm surprised he's on this list, but I'm really glad he is because he deserves a lot of respect for 20, you know, almost 20 years straight serving in the Continental Congress. As an employee of the Continental Congress, though, not actually an elected member at any point. Yeah. Penn. Yeah, no, we did Penn. Okay. Carrollton. No. No. Carrollton. Yeah, no, no, no. We did Carroll, uh, Charles Carroll of Carrollton. His name is Charles Carroll. There were actually two Charles Carrolls, if I'm not mistaken, that signed the Declaration of Independence, and they were cousins, and that's why the one went by of Carrollton, um, but his last name was actually Carroll. But fun fact, Livermore, with an R is what you meant, not Livermore. I'm gonna do Livermore anyway. No, I, I know. Hancock, did we do that? I think we we did Hancock pretty early. Um, we did Washington, Adams, Franklin, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe. So we got the big six. That's important. Ash is at least one. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> 140. We did it. We did it. Can we get to 143 in two minutes? Can we get three more names? I don't know. Football players? Telfair. Did I spell wrong? One F. Hughes. Do we do use? No. Um, Steele? Okay, John Steele. Gun. Okay. Um, I think we did Baldwin. Yeah. Let's see. Let's run through the list. Let's see if there's anything we recognize here. Oh, Rhode Island. We only got one person from Rhode Island. Okay, who's the other guy who signed from Rhode Island? Randolph. Misfits is coming out with a ton of names now. Pierce. Conway. No, uh, I see why you would think that, because the Conway Cabal, but Conway uh, was under the Board of War, which wasn't technically elected. That was a board appointed by the Ginger Slam. Whammy. One of my favorites, Simon Borum. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm not sure where you found that. Please don't be looking these up. Not that I'm accusing you of that, but I am That's I am super pumped that you came up with that name. Few, good one. Good one, William Few. Uh, anyone else from Rhode Island? Ellery, thank you, Matt. There it is. That's the one I was looking for. What about the guy who should have signed in place of Ellery, but then died? Uh, born. Uh, who happens to have the same last name as an early commander of the Continental Army? Gorham. Gorham's a fun one, too. Uh... Uh, the um, head of the uh, chairman of the committee of the whole. Dude, I think we did St. Clair. Yeah. It's a good one. 148. This is a lot. Can we get to 150? Can we get two more in 30 seconds? I'm like nine seconds ahead of you. So, maybe. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Uh, Collins. It's a good guess. Griffin. Good guess. 151. Nailed it. Oh, there must have been two Collinses. Not who I was thinking of. Stanton. Interesting. Misfit, are you looking these up? You're pulling out a lot of Rhode Island real quick. It's all right. Six seconds. It's all right if you are. Wilson. We got few. Time's up. I was looking for Samuel Ward. And when I said other football players, I was thinking Arian Foster because Foster. Um... Uh, Ashley Mason is probably the correct answer, but again, I am going to pass out before you do. Oh, we missed Walton this time. We got Walton last time. That's all right. That's all right. We got 150. We did great. Uh, Miss Thornton and Langdon. Um, thank you guys. Oh, Foster was actually two names. Um, thank you for remembering John Sullivan this time. I made a stink about it last time, if I'm not mistaken. Broom. That's the type of thing. It's a thing, so it's a little easy to remember for next week. Um... We got brown. I think there's a black and a white we didn't get. Thomas Stone is a thing. Stones are... I think we actually got Stone earlier. Um, again, again. Yeah, Troy, it happens. Um, did you, did we guess Ward? Did we guess Ward? I, 
I, I tried to type in every single thing. Oliver Ellsworth is super important, but I can see how his name's forgettable. Um, uh, Jackson. That's just one of those names that's like a normal name that you should throw out once in a while. <laughs> like Smith. Oh, we didn't do Smith. We did Smith earlier. We burned it earlier. You should always do Smith, Jackson, Johnson. <laughs> um, names that are fairly common still today were fairly common still back then. Um, Grout. Uh, strong. I'm playing over. Oh, we didn't get Morris. Oh, man. That's one of my son's names. <laughs> oh. Oh, man, because Morris is tough because there, there's another one. There's a few of them. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. But, I mean, considering we got 150. Oh, so before when we, we got Dyer, whenever we get, whenever I would, whenever I used to play this game, I would do Dyer and then remember Dewar and Dwayne. I don't know why I would remember him that way, but I would. So maybe for next week. Again, another Smith. Smith would have been a really helpful name for someone to say. There's White. Uh, Page, I guess, isn't that easy to remember? Um, there's another Morris. <laughs> um, uh, yes, it is a very common name. Actually, did I see? Yeah. Um, and that's that. I mean, 150. We got 63 percent. The average score is 35. And I like to assume that the average person playing this game is playing over and over again, and it's the same ten people. <laughs> um, Thomas Snicker, Snickinson. That does sound like a villain because it sounds like Lemony Snickets. I think is is why you have connotations like that. Um, I actually don't even know who Snickinson is. Where? I don't even know where the name is. Oh, I'm looking for a blue name. Uh, yeah, I I couldn't tell you about Snickinson. Uh, I mean, I guess technically I'm the person who should be telling you about Snickinson, but hey, uh, maybe I'll look it up this week. Although I already have like a bunch of things I'm prepared to write about this week. Um, uh, while we're at it, I should give a shout out to Adam Lewis. Uh, sent me an uh, old copy of a book called Washington and His Generals, which was first written in the 1840s. Uh, I don't think this version is from the 1840s. It is super old, but not that old. So big thank you to Mr. Lewis. Uh, for reaching out to me on Facebook who didn't need that book anymore and sent it over. Really super nice of him. Uh, s a New Jersey congressman. Oh, he must have been friendly with uh, oh, the dude whose name I'm forgetting. So Jersey was kind of like uh, New York where it was a bit of a swing state at the, at the American founding. Um, where's New Jersey? Um, Sinekson, first congress. Yes. Um, the other man's name escapes me. It was something like Bloodworth. Uh, it came out uh, a little bit afterward. Excuse me. Um, he, he came to the second one, I think. Uh, you know what? Oh, I already have it up. Um, New Jersey. It's not like Blood. Timothy Bloodworth was from the South, but it, it's a name like Bloodworth. And New Jersey is going to be really wide open. Uh, Aaron Kitchell. New Jersey was a little bit of a swing state, and when Aaron Kitchell showed up, he ends up uh, being swinging uh, the the New Jersey delegation to the to not even delegation, the New Jersey members of the first Congress towards um, the Democratic Republicans as opposed to the Federalists, which was important um, early in the war, especially when the election of eighteen hundred comes around. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know I know the name Snickinson from when I made this article, which I never put the years in, but this is like two years ago I wrote this article. So. Forgive me for not remembering his name. <laughs> um, great. Well, thanks, guys. I hope you had fun. I hope we learned something. I learned. I learned. I actually probably learned. I don't. I don't want to say no. I definitely learned more researching the articles I write and making the videos than from this, because <laughs> um, I'm like literally learning things. Uh, but I always learn things here too, especially that crazy question before. I'll tell you what. Before we go, let's do a few more quick trivia questions. Definitely hit like for me. It's the best thing you can do in the whole world. Let's do two more trivia questions, shall we? And then we'll call it a night. I know we're a little bit over, but you know what? It's America. We do what we want. Um. First, we'll do the Constitution card question. Again, these are all over the place, not necessarily American Revolution. Why are filibusters allowed in the Senate, but not in the House? Why are filibusters allowed in the Senate and not in the House? 
Let me know if you know the answer to that. I don't know. I think that I was supposed to look something up. You're right. What was it? <laughs> oh, man. What was it? Uh, that's the real trivia question. I was supposed to look something up. Someone scroll up. Someone scroll up and tell me what it was. Uh, there's too many people in the house. The house changed the rules. Because uh, the house isn't doesn't... Filibusters are crap. And the house figured that out. The Senate hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, my opinion, again, shouldn't talk about modern politics uh, on the show. Let's look. Under Article 1, Section 5, each House of Congress can set its own rules. The larger house, whose membership reflects the population of each state, has set rules that limit how long members can speak and that reduce the opportunity to block legislation coming to a vote. The smaller Senate, where all states are equal, has a set rules that give greater voice to the minority. Senators can engage in unlimited debate, or filibusters, in which the minority can prevent blah 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 because it's the size. Someone got it right. Who said that? Uh, too many people in the house. There you go, Ashley. You got it. Um, no room on the walls. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, no comment. Uh, yeah, okay, last trivia card. Uh, New York, what happened here at this date? In New York Harbor, in New York, uh, September 6th, 1776. September 6th, 1776. So just about um, uh, two months after the Declaration of Independence was signed and about... April, May, June, July, August. Almost six months after the British evacuated Boston. What happened there? I don't know if this is a political question, Troy. It's December, because September 6th. Uh, the Battle of Brooklyn. So here's the thing. Is the British August... Okay. August 27th, 1776... Something happened. The British, I think, I think is the battle. I think the Battle of Brooklyn is August 27th. And then the battle, August 26th, uh, September 6th, about a week and a half later, would have been uh, uh, something Bay, uh, Kipps Bay, would be my guess. Battle of Brooklyn's an amazing guess. I think I personally, without looking, think you're a week and a half off what a great guess um uh the 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 uh the the gatsby the gatsby was a few years earlier off of rhode island historical i think it's the gatsby because i'm no way i'm never sure about that name either um troy is saying the british landed i let me read it i can't believe this happened 17 september 6th right away okay the battle of brooklyn i'm pretty sure was august 27th two weeks later the world's first submarine attack the americans had the first submarine attack so i'll read what they have here and then relate what i remember about it after that americans attempted to use the turtle was the name of it a submersive craft designed by david bushnell against hms eagle admiral richard howe's flagship while studying at Yale, Bushnell provided, proved that gunpowder could detonate underwater. He built the turtle to deliver an explosive charge while submerged. Made of oak reinforced with iron bands and covered in tar, the waterproof craft was seven and a half feet high and six feet wide in the center. It could stay underwater for 30 minutes. A single crewman, Ezra Lee, powered the vessel by two hand crank propellers. Atop the turtle, a protruding screw was attached to a waterproof fuse and a clock detonated explosive charge, which Lee screwed into place. But that September night, after maneuvering beneath the eagle, Lee hit an iron bar both times he tried to screw in the, the mine to the ship's hull. With his air supply dwindling, Lee returned to South Manhattan, releasing the bomb en route. It exploded harmlessly. So if you've seen the show uh, Turn, they, they reference the turtle. Now, uh, Nathaniel Scudder, the guy who the show implies invented it, is not the one who invented it. As they say, David Bushnell invented it. He invented several other interesting things at the time. Um, and it wasn't uh, Caleb Brewster, as they show in that episode. It was uh, uh, Ezra Lee, not related to any of the other Lee families. But uh, someone, actually, I do believe that it, if I'm not mistaken, it was uh, uh, the, the head of the spy ring. 
Benjamin Talmadge was knew of David Bushnell from college, from Yale, and introduced and recommended Ezra Lee be the one to do it. I'm pretty sure it was uh, 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 Talmadge. Uh, what's actually interesting about David Bushnell that I particularly sticks out to me is he was older when he went to Yale. At a time where most people went to college that were going to college was about 16, 17, David Bushnell was already headed into his mid-20s, and he was a farmer who was very smart and read a lot and educated himself and got himself into Yale, which was extremely uncommon at the time. Um, yeah, 1776. Uh, again, he was running out of air. <laughs> they hadn't figured that whole part out. He didn't submerge deep enough to really get the bends, but he goes over, and like it said on the card, he he had like a thing up top that he could do screw to screw the bomb into the boat. The bomb, literally a bomb made out of, I, I don't even know if I can say that on YouTube, but a, 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 time, a time bomb because it was set on a clock that he that he wanted to screw into the bottom of the wood boat, but these wood boats did have some metal holding them together, and he kept hitting the metal, and he gave up. What's interesting is he surfaced on his way out, and British saw him and tried to chase him, and then but the bomb exploded, and they were like, what the hell was that? Because they didn't know, there was, they didn't, there was, they, it was the first ever submarine. No one ever saw a submarine before, so when it came out from the water, they were like, what is that? And then Bushnell opens the top so he could breathe, and they're like, oh my god, there's an American in there, and they're going to go get him, and then the bomb goes off, and he just barely got away. In fact, I'm going to pull up my article on Lee, because he has a quote that I want to get right that's absolutely amazing, and we'll end on this, because I know you guys are tired. It's been a long night of trivia. Um, Lee, oh, and I have a ton of Lees, of course. Billy Lee, Thomas Ludwell Lee, Light Horse Harry Lee. Okay. Under the Sea with Ezra Lee. <laughs> um... And do we have it? Uh, where is the quote? Where is the quote? I know it's in here somewhere. Here it is. Okay, uh, I'm going to read part of my article leading up to it. Uh, eventually, with air running out, Lee realized he had to abandon the mission. When he surfaced, several British sailors noticed the strange contraption in the water. They hopped onto rowboats and gave chase. Ezra fled and decided to let the mine loose and activated the timer. And I'll, I'll allow him to explain in his own words. Quote, I eyed them, and when they got within 50 or 60 yards of me, I let loose the magazine in the hopes that it should make the, in hopes that they should take it. I eyed them, and when they got within 50 or 60 yards of me, I let loose the magazine in hopes that if they should take me, they would likewise pick up the magazine, and then we should all be blown up together. That's dedication to the cause. That's dedication. They might catch up to me on these rowboats. He literally is paddling, kind of like a paddle boat, but way heavier. And he assumes he's going to get caught. And his decision was to let the mine go. So if they catch up to me, we should, quote, all be blown up together. Uh, I'll finish my part here. Fortunately, seeing two odd devices in the water made the Redcoats nervous because now it was like a submarine they'd never seen before and a time bomb, which they had never seen before. Um, so fortunately, seeing the two devices in the water made the Redcoats nervous and they gave up their pursuit. Shortly after, the bomb exploded, sending water sky high. Um, I believe he would actually, yeah. Uh, so Ezra Lee impressed Washington with his maneuvers that day. Uh, he was assigned to several secret intelligence gathering missions, so he too became a spy. Um, who, uh, uh, and, and Washington noted how, how the clarity Lee used in his correspondence. Um, he served with the army for the rest of the war. Um, and, and yeah, Ezra Lee, really cool guy. Um, yeah, Ashley, it's hilarious and really bold to <laughs> like, yeah, we're all go down together. <laughs> Yeah, really cool. Uh, uh, you know, if you want to, I've read about half of it, but um, I will post in the link here. I will post that. If you guys are interested in reading about Ezra Lee. And you know what? I have an article on Bushnell I wrote too. Let's see if it's in here. Um, bring that up real quick for you. Bushnell. Because um, he's worth reading about too. Just a another super fascinating character. Um David Bushnell's explosive career. Yes, I'm very, very good with my clickbait. I'm trying, not all the time. Actually, sometimes I post an article, I'm like, I, I don't care, just put it up. <laughs> no one's gonna, yeah. My regular readers will read it. Um, 
All right, yeah, Troy. No, no problem. I'm going to sign off now, too. Uh, thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Uh, questions or comments uh, you have, Sunday at noon Eastern, we will be having a um, study hall like usual. Uh, it will be cut off very specifically at an hour. I, I have a fantasy hockey draft because my fantasies are hockey related um, at 1.30, so I will have to cut that off. Unfortunately, it got bumped up because other people don't know their own schedules, and it was supposed to be at 7. Thank you, guys. Uh, Misfit, one more thing. Imagine being a red coat. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, they call it the turtle. I don't know how much it looked like a turtle, but but these, you know, first they see this one thing pop up, and they're like, what? And then an American pops out. They're like, what? And then, it, like, get in your boats. They get in the rowboats. They start going, and then, like, something pops out of the thing they never seen. Amazing. Amazing. Go Pens. Ginger. My mom's family's from Pittsburgh, so, like, I would have a soft spot for the pens if, uh, if, you know, I'm a Ranger fan. I'm not particularly angry at the pens, but, uh, we've had a lot of playoff meetings, as you may know, though probably my children will grow up to be Sabres fans. And for whoever just signed on to hear that, I apologize if that offends you. You've signed on at the end of it and they're gone. <laughs> You've signed on at the end of a very long discussion. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, study hall in a few days. Um, I forgot to put a link to the um, the Discord in the bottom. Historical and Ginger. Uh, oh, Ginger, I think you did pop on. Uh, but uh, Historical, if you're not on, uh, I forgot to put the link in, but let me know if you want to join the Discord chat where we are always talking about American Revolution. We got funny American Revolution memes in one spot. We got conversation in another. And I'm going to start putting, this Monday, I'm going to start putting a reading of the week there that we will end up discussing at the study hall in the end. So again, thank you so much. My cat just tracked open the door to make it nice and loud as you're leaving. If you guys want to hit like on your way out because there's 10 of you here and only eight likes, that would be amazing. So thank you so much. You are champions of the world.